Hello and welcome to the second video on how to make variables, vectors, and matrices in MATLAB. We will discuss sizes and length associated with these kind of variables, we'll discuss some useful built-in functions and advanced indexing techniques. The course is recommended for UG and PG students as well as practicing engineers. Please subscribe to the channel for future notifications. MATLAB is a weekly type of programming language meaning that no explicit declaration of variables initialization with data type requirements. The variables are of type double by default with 8 bytes or 64-bit memory allocation. String variables are enclosed in single quotes and each character is 16-bit or 2 bytes. The variable can be assigned some value, for example, 3.8909 as double or m, a, t, as string. MATLAB stands for Matrix Laboratory, a variable is a matrix of any size. Other types of variables include complex, symbolic, and single byte or 8-bit. A variable is created by assigning a value to a name such as var1 is equal to 3.14, and my string variable equal to hello world. The variable name must start from a letter, followed by any combination of letters, numbers, and underscores. Names are case sensitive, for example, var1 with small v is different with capital V. MATLAB has some built-in variable names. It's recommended not to use these explicitly. These including i and j, for complex numbers. Pi is a mathematical constant with value 3.1415926. The last value is assigned with name ans in MATLAB. Similarly, inf and minus inf are used for positive and negative infinity values. NAN returns the scalar representation of not a number. Operations return NAN when they have undefined numeric results, such as 0 divided by 0 or 0 multiplied with infinity. In MATLAB, a scalar is a variable with one row and one column. A variable can be assigned any value explicitly. The value can be seen in the workplace or command window. Scalars are the simple variables that we use and manipulate in simple algebraic equations with one variable as a function of existing variable. The semicolon at the end of statement suppress the output in the command window. Matrices and arrays are the fundamental representation of information and data in MATLAB. There are two types of arrays. 1. Matrix of numbers such as double, complex or strings and 2. Cell arrays with indexed data containers or objects. Cell arrays commonly contain either lists of text, combinations of text and numbers, or numeric arrays of different sizes. MATLAB makes vector operations easy, and make it a powerful tool for various applications and fields of science. To create an array with multiple elements in a single row, separate the elements with either a comma, or a space. This type of array is called a row vector. Without the semicolon, the output can be seen in command window. The workspace window show the array name, size, number of bytes and the class. The semicolon at the end of statement will suppress the output in command window. Column vectors are created using square brackets, with semicolons, or new lines to separate elements. A row vector may be converted into a column vector, and vice versa, using the transpose operator represented by single low quote. The specs can be seen in workspace window. Size returns you with the dimensions in terms of rows, and columns, of the defined matrix, whereas the length returns with only the number of rows or columns, which one is bigger. The size can be found either by looking in the workspace window for a particular variable, or displaying in command window. We can use the function's size to find the dimensions of a vector or matrix. If the lengths of two vectors is the same, if the numbers of rows more than column, then that's a column vector. Similarly, the number of columns more than row, then row vector. The length function is used to find the length or maximum dimension of the array or matrix. For example, the array row has four elements and array column has also four elements. The lengths of both is same but dimensions are different. A matrix is a two-dimensional array of numbers or a combination of rows and columns. In MATLAB, we can create a matrix by entering elements in each row as comma or space delimited numbers and using semicolons to mark the end of each row. Please make sure of not to violate linear algebra rules. A 2x2 two two matrix, A, is shown. We can also generate matrices from vectors or other matrices through concatenation. We have the arrays A and B as row vectors and the array C as column vector. Each has two elements. We concatenate A and B to create matrix D. Note the first row of matrix D is row vector A, and the second row of D is vector B. 
The matrix E is formed from matrix D and column vector C. Finally, the first two rows of matrix F are formed from matrix E, placed two times. To create submatrix of size 2 by 6, the third row is formed from vectors A, B and A to make a size of 1 by 6. Please verify from different colors. The STR is a string array. When we add, subtract, multiply, or divide a matrix by a number, this is called the scalar operation. Scalar operations produce a new matrix with same number of rows and columns with each element of the original matrix added to, subtracted from, multiplied by, or divided by the number. Scalar operations on complex numbers requires the numbers to be enclosed in parentheses otherwise logical errors will be produced. Examples of arithmetic and power or exponentiation are shown. To set pressed ins, use of parentheses helps avoid logical errors. Note that with parentheses, the operator is required otherwise MATLAB will generate an error. Built-in functions are those that come with MATLAB or are part of an add-on product. One of the more interesting ways to search for built-in functions is to use the lookfor function. In this case, MATLAB doesn't look in the documentation, rather, it looks in the source code files. This kind of search is important because you can sometimes see connections between functions this way and find alternatives that might not normally occur to you. Examples of built-in functions of trigonometric, logarithmic, statistics, are shown please see help for their details. Transpose operator turn a column vector into a row vector and vice versa. For real numbers, the apostrophe symbol and other alternatives results in the same conversion, while it take the Hermitian transpose that is, transposes and conjugation of the complex numbers. The essential rule when adding and subtracting vectors and matrices is that they must be the same size. We can't add or subtract vectors or matrices of different sizes because MATLAB will display an error message. We can make the transpose of either row or column vector to get the resulting column or row vector. We can sum or multiply individual elements using the built-in functions of sum and prod respectively. An element-wise function allows you to apply a function to the elements of a data container. The data container can be a list, set, table, array, matrix, or vector. If we have a vector t with three elements, the exponential function will return the corresponding three exponential values in the order listed. The multiplication, division, and power operations have both the standard and element ways. Modes of operation. Please note for element-wise operation, the vectors or matrices must have the same sizes. The resulting vector or matrix will have the same size. To scale every element of a matrix, the scaling matrix should have the same size so the corresponding elements of both matrices will multiply or divide depending upon the operator. Given a row vector, of size 1 by 3 and column vector, B of size 3 by 1. The two vectors are of the same lengths, their element-wise multiplication will generate an error as their sizes are different. The element-wise multiplication of B with a 3 by 1 vector will result in another vector of the same size. For normal multiplication, division, and exponentiation, the rules of linear algebra must be followed. The inner dimensions must match. Exponentiation is only possible for square matrices or scalars. The division is equivalent to multiplying by the inverse of the matrix. Normal multiplication of row vector with a column vector, both having same lengths, is a dot product. MATLAB provides many built-in functions for automatic initialization including initialization with zeros, ones, uniform and normal random numbers, not a number and so on. Initializing helps in pre-allocation of memory, thus speeding up the computations. Using a particular function is dependent on application. For example RAND is used for bitstream generation and RANDN for additive white Gaussian. Noise generation in applications of communication, control, and machine learning etc. The syntax is the output matrix or vector name with rows and columns as parameters. The first parameter is the number of desired rows while the second parameter is the number of columns. We can also have initialization with equally spaced numbers using linspace or the colon operator. In the former, the input parameters include the start point, end point, and the number of total points or elements. In the colon operator, an increment is explicitly provided. The default increment is 1. For example the array C without increment defined is an array with elements 1 to 5. Similar. To Lin's pace, one can use log's pace for logarithmic initialization. Every variable in MATLAB is an array that can hold many numbers and the first index is 1. In size can't be negative, 
Otherwise MATLAB will report error. When we want to access selected elements of an array, use indexing. For example, consider the 1 by 4 vector A, the first, second, third, and fourth element can be found as shown. We can create one vector from another vector using vector indexing. For example, x is row vector with four elements. The statement ax of 2 colon 3 will assign element numbers 2 and 3 of x to create array a end is a special keyword of MATLAB. If written for indexing, it represent the last element. To atch is the last element end minus 1 is used if one don't know exactly the number of elements. To access the elements of a matrix, there are two ways. The most common is to specify row and column or subscripts, and the second is linear indexing which use a single subscript that traverses down each column in order. Indexing allows one to create other arrays or matrices of different sizes from particular elements. The colon operator select the contiguous elements or block otherwise the desired element numbers must be listed as array. When the colon operator is used as a single parameter, it will select either all rows or columns depending on you choose as first parameter or the second one. MATLAB provides a list of functions which return indices as well as the corresponding values. The min and max functions return the corresponding values along with the index. To find any of the indices of specific values or desired ranges, the find function will return the array of indices. The IND2 sub and sub2 IND are the utility functions for conversion between subscripts and indices. To summarize, we discussed variables, arrays, matrices and indexing. In the next we will be presenting plotting in MATLAB. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for future notifications.